Compare Romans 8, 7 to 8. Man's incapacity to believe in Christ as Savior is only blocked by his own will. Because God can't say, I, God so loved the world that I gave my one and only son for your sins. But the whole world's not capable of believing. So I'm going to have to make some people to believe. Nah. Because he's not making salvation available to anybody. Unless he forces them to believe. That's not the God I know. How can you so love the world? So, the sinful mind is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law, nor can it do so. Puzzling word, nor can. Capable. Is it capable? No, they're not capable of doing so. Those controlled by the sinful nature, equals unbelievers, in verse 9, cannot please God, i.e. cannot exercise faith in Christ unto salvation, or anything else. Unbelievers cannot please God, because they will not. Ah. Ever get a, a person with a stubborn will? You give them all the help they can, all the information, and, and the path to their success is paved clearly for them. And they won't take it because they will not. They just stubborn. The will is a matter of man's volition. So man may choose to believe if he somehow chooses of his own volition overriding his own sin nature, evil will, and choosing to believe what he formerly would not believe. It's a matter of man's will. You, however, are controlled, you believers are controlled, not by the sinful nature, but by the Spirit. If the Spirit of God lives in you, and you're defined as a believer, so he does, and if anyone does not have the Spirit of God, he does not belong to Christ. Compare 2 Corinthians 4, 3-4. The God of this age, those the lower G, has blinded the minds of unbelievers so that they cannot see the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. Notice that while one is an unbeliever, one is blinded to the gospel, helpless and hopeless, unable to please God through faith in his Son. If he cannot, he cannot believe. Why? Because he will not. He can believe. He's got the potential. To, but his will is so powerful. The will of man is so powerful. And when it's controlled by the sin nature, it can lead a man to his own destruction despite the obvious path he's on. He cannot believe because he will not, albeit he does have the capacity to believe in God's Son for eternal life. Since all men before they become believers, have sinful minds, are controlled by the sinful nature all of the time, and are blinded to the gospel. They therefore cannot please God with faith in his Son unto salvation. Then no one solely of his own accord can be saved. That's an interesting point. Again, because they will not without the drawing of God an individual will not persuade himself to choose of his own volition to believe. Again, he cannot because he will not. It's a matter of the human will. So I'm going to change this into a sentence, capital of letter. Without the drawing of God, an individual will not persuade himself to choose of his own volition to believe. He cannot, because he will not. He's stuck with his own will.
condemn. Do for total destruction. Yet God provides information like you wouldn't believe. You've got the Bible today. Years ago, it wasn't so much information. But we've got the New Testament Greek Bible. We've got the Old Testament. We've got uh, the, the priests of old days and the, the pastors and teachers of these new days. We've got the apostles and their writings and scripture, the, the epistles. We've got everything. And I've talked to atheists. And I provide a, a compelling argument. And hardly ever get past this compelling argument. They're going to throw up all kinds of stuff. And I don't want to argue niceties because they're, they get nasty and they don't care anyway. They're just looking to destroy your own faith. So they're going to come at you every which way. I'm informed enough to defend myself so it gets ugly. I don't want to get that ugly. So what do I do? Stop the whole thing. Look them square in the eye and say, look, you know what I'm looking at? Looking square in the eye, I said, I'm looking at the most complex thing in the universe. Now, we know from science, Sir Isaac Newton, that things don't evolve. They devolve. Things less complex don't work together with other things less complex to create something more complex. It just isn't science. You're focusing on what they think. So, somebody had to design you and create you. And the first model had to be in good working order, perfect working order, because if any particular essential or non-essential function of your human body isn't working, it doesn't survive and doesn't procreate, and we don't have a human race. So that is a miraculous thing, except for the fact that a designer far more complex than you or I has created it, designed it, created it, and we have the human race despite its flaws. We have an explanation of why there's flawing uh, the flaws, but I don't want to go into that. So I got that point across. It makes their mouth open. They have no answer. I said, well, you then you disagree with Sir Isaac Newton for the, the laws, the four laws of thermodynamics? Really? Now they get angry and walk away. That's the idea. But get them angry and walk away when you told them the truth. That's the issue. That's what Jesus did. He's my example. So I'm going to follow that. That's the best argument I've, I've found so far. To get to the point, minimize your own uh, aggravation and anxiety when somebody uh, gets in your face. Just present that. Time to cool your heels, dust off your shoes. Compare to John 12, 37 to 40. Even after Jesus had done all these miraculous signs in their presence, they still would not believe in him. Look, will not believe in him. This was to fulfill the word of Isaiah the prophet, Lord, who has believed our message, and to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed. For this reason, they could not believe, because as Isaiah says elsewhere, this is Isaiah, he has blinded their eyes and deadened their hearts. Their hearts, that's the volition within man's mind. The willingness, so they can neither see with their eyes, nor understand with their hearts, nor turn, and I would heal them. So individuals, individuals who would not believe in Jesus Christ, God made it so they could not believe. Because they can't confront their own will. They're dead set against believing in anything having to do with God. They want to get religious about it. They still insert themselves. And so they insert themselves in the mix of the doing, and they don't have salvation either. But now, Bible does commentary comments on 1237 to John. John, from the beginning of his gospel, 111, had sounded the theme of national unbelief, Israel's. Now, John now explained. Let me correct that. In spite of all Jesus' miraculous signs, they still would not believe. I'm correcting these errors. In him, their unbelief was irrational, as sin always is. It's a matter of irrational means it's a matter of the human will. No matter how well it is presented, no matter how truthful the person even understands what he's faced with, he still won't go the direction that's rational. 
is going to go irrationally. Self-destruction. The Jews' national irrational unbelief had been predicted by Isaiah the prophet. The clearest Old Testament passage concerning the suffering servant, Isaiah 53, 1-12, began by stating that Israel would not perceive God's revelation in and through the servant. Matter of fact, Israel, Israelites or Jews today even think the suffering servant is Israel. Which, when you read it, no, doesn't. The suffering servant in Isaiah, in, another, in chapter 7 or 9, says he's born of, of Israel and everlasting God. You can't be born of Israel and be all of Israel. Doesn't make any sense. So the clearest Old Testament passage concerning the suffering servant, Isaiah 53, began by stating that Israel would not perceive God's revelation in and through the servant. Who has believed our message and seen his arm revealed, despite the miracles, implies that only a few have believed, quoting Isaiah 53, 1. So, Isaiah uh, goes on, uh, BKC goes on, in John 12, 39 to 40. Then John, again, quoted from Isaiah 66, 10, to explain that the nation as a whole was unable to believe because they constantly rejected God's revelation. And he's there. What, what about Moses took Israel out of Egypt's clutches and started a, a new nation of people and performed mirac miraculous things for them? No, they constantly rejected God's revelation. He had punished them with judicial blindness and deadened their hearts. People in Jesus' day, like those in Isaiah's day, refused to believe. They would not believe, therefore they could not believe. Similar illustrations of God's punishing of persistent sin by hardening our common. So don't turn your back on God. After a while, he'll let you have your own will, which is naturally, because of the sin nature, going to reject things that will be to your own advantage and go with something that's self-destructive. Election is the work of God. It is not a matter of the individual electing God and then God electing him in response. And neither God's justice nor man's free will is impugned. This is remarkable. It's way over my head, but I've studied God's word enough to accept the value of this way beyond my own self-destructive tendencies. I think I'll go with what God has for me in, in glory. So just as the coach of a team I'm giving you some kind of an example. It's not going to be perfect. Chooses those on the team who are going to play in a particular game. His choice being dependent upon his will and not on the will of those on his team. Otherwise, it's not his choice at all. And his choice not restricting the free will choice of his chosen players to play that in that game. So you've got a whole bunch of guys on a little league a team. And, you, you, know, you know, they use, uh, uh, you know, nine player positions and batters. And you can switch out and back and forth. But basically, he's going to pick those. Uh, they're going to play in that game. So in a similar way, God elects those of mankind who are going to be provided with the gift of faith unto salvation. Now, they're going to, God gives you the gift of faith, but at the same time, you choose of your own volition to believe. So you have the capacity to believe in Jesus in your unwilling state. And if God has given you the gift of faith, he's worked with your volition, encouraged, Directed, persuaded, however. It's an amazing thing. And inevitably, I chose to believe. And I look back, out of the dark. I knew I couldn't uh, commit to live for Jesus all my life, to be saved. That was impossible at 17 years old. But all of a sudden, the high school teacher explained the real truth of John 3.16 to me. And my eyes were open. How were they open? And I settled eternity. I was so excited for the rest of my existence in eternity, for eternal existence, by that moment of faith alone and Christ alone, at that day when I was 17. So although God elects those of mankind who are going to be provided with the gift of faith unto salvation, God's choice, his choice being dependent upon his plan and will, his sovereignty, and not on the will of man, Otherwise, it is not God's choice at all. You're waiting to see what man's going to do. No, no, God, I've chosen this. And his choice now restricting the free will choice of his elect to believe in Christ as Savior, though. Wow, 